Hey, this is Notzer, and today we're taking a look at the Tier 6 Premium British Light Cruiser, Dido. It is currently available as of 11.1 for 70 Mediterranean tokens, which you can earn through personal challenge missions. You can also buy them with doubloons. The only caveat is the Canarias, the Tier 6 Premium Spanish Heavy Cruiser, is mutually exclusive with this ship, so you can only have one or the other through the Mediterranean token event. Now, that doesn't mean that, you know, at some point in the future, they'll lock you out of being able to buy it, but it will be a different currency, and of course, that currency won't be, quote-unquote, free, even though you have to play the game to unlock it. Now, as far as the Dido build, I go Main Armament Mod 1, Steering and Propulsion Protection, Aiming System Mod 1, Faster Rudder Shift, because it does have the British Acceleration baked into the ship, which is great. For the commander, incoming fire alert. Focus AA, which provides the 25% priority sector increase. We take a drill and rush because it's amazing. Concealment. Radio location, which enables hunting and a little bit more defensive positioning with smoke. Notice I don't have hydro, and no, you can't equip it by slickening it over the defensive AA. It's just not an option. The other two skills that I take are really important. IFHE and... HE damage increase. So IFHE makes the base HE penetration go from 22 millimeters to 27 millimeters, which is a huge, huge buff to the effectiveness of these guns. And then the high explosive damage increase, which is 10%, is basically free for three points. There's no downside to it with the super lights, which the Dido happens to be having 133 millimeter guns. Overall though, this is a oversized British destroyer. It plays like one. It's got a bunch of tools that enable that. It's got the British acceleration, of course. We've got the short duration smoke. We also have single launch torpedoes. And on top of that, we have 360 gun turrets. So very effective at aggression and Avoiding ambush, which is a huge part of the 360 nature. It just allows you to always have your guns right where they need to be, and you can always actively maneuver optimally. Now this enemy DD, he's trying to pull back, but we're aggressively pushing him. And the reason why I haven't decided to smoke or anything like that, there's huge islands that are blocking line of sight, and I really want to kill this guy before he gets out. That would be the ideal situation. And I'm just trying desperately to kill him before he gets out of range. And he is doing everything he can to try and get out of range. Notice the shells. Very accurate. Very effective. Love the extra high explosive damage. 10% is a very big number. For three points, it, it definitely stands out. And that might be the kill shot right there. Ooh, not yet. Oh, we need one more. There's far too many enemies and we've been seen far too long. But that, that should be it. Enemy DD knocked out. He tried, and he failed. Uh, so we're just going to try and rush over to the island and quite literally duck into cover. <laughs> so we'll be able to capture this base, and I actually end up activating my smoke. It's very close to the edge, and I didn't want the Fuso to potentially see me or disrupt this capture. We do want to get the capture. It's obviously the primary point of this aggressive push. And we do indeed do that. Now, let's talk about the build, specifically IFHE and the high explosive damage increase. Because this is a super light cruiser, it has really bad high explosive penetration, 22 millimeters specifically, which is nothing. With IFHE though, you get all the way up to 27 millimeters of penetration, which enables you to pin tier eight bow and stern cruisers battle cruisers for the Germans and up and coming British battle cruisers. It also enables you to pin 26 millimeters, which of course is the equal in tier seven battleship bow and stern. The Americans, the Brits, the French, all of them have a huge amount of soft outer armor that would easily be farmable with your high explosive. If you didn't take IFHE, you would have to rely more on AP to do any bits of damage. And I can tell you, it ain't good. Omitting IFHE and 
the HE damage skill is just not optimal. I would not recommend it at all on the Dido. Another skill that may cause controversy, radiolocation. I end up using it a lot to hunt, and it just gives me a good informed amount of information about the map. It really is that simple. It just allows me to understand the game better. I can communicate more about what's going on because of the different ranges and how it interacts with those ranges. And nine times out of 10, my intuition's pretty much spot on. And it is definitely helpful in creating that accuracy. So, you know, relocation just, it's a hugely helpful skill. And I just don't understand why it gets so much hate because it's really helpful. All the other skills, you know, they're pretty typical. I think it's well documented that I feel like the cruiser commander skill tree is pretty weak. You know, it's it's not it's not anything to write home about, but I will say the IFHE HE damage, those seven points, there could not be a better seven point skill for the Dido than those two combined. Because they just are drastically increasing your effectiveness. Without them, probably not a ship that I would go play because it probably ends up feeling really awful. With them, you can actually do some damage. You'll also notice we've got single launch torpedoes. We've got a defensive AA skill. I cannot swap it. It's the only option. It doesn't have like improve continuous damage like the Americans. It really is just a defensive AA option. And it also uses the short duration smoke, which is prevalent on all the British DDs and even some other cruisers like uh, the Belfast 43. I really like the short duration smoke. It's long enough that I can farm in it, but it's short enough that I don't overstay my welcome. And that's really the goal, of course. But you know, lacking hydroacoustic as even an option is a disappointment because it will create situations where you're camping in smoke or you're really close to someone and they're camping in smoke or you borrow it and you just don't have a tool to protect yourself from the ambush torpedo. And I can totally understand if players are like, ah, that's not worth it to not have that as an option for defense. And, you know, that may or may not be true. But I do think that the short duration smoke kind of enables a pretty safe play, quite honestly. It, it works really well. I really appreciate it. I enjoy it a lot. This ship just ends up feeling like such a, a breath of fresh air as a super light cruiser player. I really don't like super light cruisers. I don't feel like they give a lot of value in a lot of situations. You'll notice that my build forgoes improving the AA. It's adequate to above average. It's a super light cruiser. It's kind of their dual purpose is to have good AA. So you can definitely rely on it living up to the AA expectations. Man, that was a nice big healthy broadside. These are chonky, definitely chonky broadsides on DDs and stuff like that. Ooh, <laughs> speaking of chonk, this guy just got walloped. Let's try and finish him off then, shall we? Now, in this situation, I could probably switch to AP and pin him and kill him, and maybe I should do that. I felt like, oh, surely this salvo is going to kill him. Nope. Surely this salvo is going to kill the Kutuzov, and yes, there we go. Take two. Now, the reload isn't the best. Eight seconds, seven and a half on a good day. It's definitely slow for a super light. And that's one of the other reasons why I think you need to invest in high explosive because you're already dealing with a super long reload relative to others. You can't afford to have to have the wrong ammo type and to be forced to fire it on targets like the Tirpitz. If I had to fire, AP at this guy, I would never penetrate him at all. Ever. It would be, like, futile. And, oh! Wow. <laughs> well, that's a lot of damage taken in a short amount of time, and uh, you don't need to tell me twice. I'm gonna hide. Which is a great trait of this. The super short duration smoke is pretty much always off a of cooldown when you need it the most. 
In fact, there shouldn't be a situation where you just openly take direct shots like that. If you're open water and you're trying to farm, probably like, you know, eight to 10,000, just pop a smoke, do it, and oh, don't do it. Very close. Oh, well, he's gonna die. So we're just gonna shift our focus to the other side. The Dido, very fun British super light cruiser that is very reminiscent of the destroyer line. And I love that. The destroyers are great. And, you know, I don't have to tell you twice. It's my most recommended line. It always ends up being my number one. And I'm a, I'm a DD main. So absolutely, if you love the British DDs, you're going to love the Dido, I think. Having said that, I will be covering the Canarius on tomorrow's video. And I will showcase its strengths and weaknesses. It's long range, AP only, French speed boost. And you'll have to look forward to that video tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. You can also subscribe to my channel. I do stream at twitch.tv forward slash Thank you and have a wonderful day.